What up, players? It's Warm Boss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to my first Tay tutorial in a long time, and this is gonna be Crom the Conqueror, an old school, I guess it, you would say, out of print. I mean, you can still special order it from Games Workshop. Warriors of Chaos model. This is in metal, so he's gonna be a little bit heavy and difficult to work with. He's not gonna want to stay on his his little plinth there, but we're gonna try to soldier through. So the main colors we are using are Balthazar Gold, Abaddon Black, Rhinox Hide, Lead Belcher, Steel Legion Drab, Castellan Green, Rakarth Flesh, Xandri Dust, and for the washes we've got Known Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and Seraphim Sepia, although you could also use Raikland Flesh Shade as well. So you're going to notice throughout this video that um, I am a little bit out of practice. I've got the zoom set to hopefully catch everything, but uh, getting used to, again, painting will uh, kind of mess around with that. And also some of the wash, you'll notice I pointed it out there, kind of sank to the bottom of the, of the model. So. Uh, just a lot of b being mindful about where your paints go and uh, yeah, let's get started and see how we do. So the first thing we're going to do is prime our model in black spray and I use a flat black spray to do my priming. I think it's a P3 that I use the black primer. And uh, the most prominent color on this model is going to be Balthazar Gold. If you look up any pictures of Krom the Conqueror, you're probably going to see the one that uh, appears the most, or the most often, is the one that Games Workshop released way back in, oh, I would say, the early 2000s maybe? Or, yeah, when they were doing the Storm of, Storm of Chaos campaign. And uh, Kron the Conqueror, he's an interesting character. Uh, he had some interesting special rules as well. He was a uh, chaos warrior, a marauder from the uh, Kurgan Kul tribe, K-U-L. And he um, rose to prominence and he had all these dreams of one day meeting a uh, chaos warrior. Or he had dreams of a chaos warrior with a sword sheathed in flame and uh, he, he didn't know if it was a sign from the gods that it would be him or, uh, or a warrior even mightier than him and uh, one day he met Archaon and the two of them got into a scrap and he was like hey I'm the king around here you uh, can't bother you can't come into my realm uninvited and he beat up all of Archaon's men and then uh, Archaon kind of just handed his butt to him and was like, I'm Archaon the Ever Chosen, boosh, boosh, boosh. And <laughs> I mean, basically that's the, that's the fluff in a nutshell. And then he was like, oh my gosh, you're awesome. I'm going to follow you forever. So uh, he only really existed there. And everybody was kind of surprised when he popped up in the End Times book, Nagash, as one of Archaon's main dudes, because, you know, he was kind of abandoned after the Storm of Chaos campaign, but I think it's a, it was a good way, it was very clever of Games Workshop to take all these characters that we uh, old beards and we older uh, players might remember from earlier editions and stuff, and especially because Krom didn't really have a model release after this big heavy metal one came out. I'm not sure if they re-released him in Finecast or not. He's very similar to the Chaos Exalted hero with the one weapon up and the big shield. You'll also notice that one of Krom's things was that he was equally good at using a sword and a shield as well as a sword and an axe and he could ditch the shield at a moment's notice and get special rules for more attacks or he could uh, whip the sword or the shield back around and be this almost like unstoppable tank, unkillable tank in earlier editions. So the rules for him were pretty cool. They uh, didn't really stick to any sort of fluff. I mean, he was known as the Herald of Archaon, so he would kind of go ahead of Archaon and kind of be his personal champion if uh, Archaon was needed elsewhere. What we're doing with the 
um, was it Rakrai Flesh as this color? It might have been, yeah, for the Steel Legion Drab. Sorry about the focus, uh, you guys. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out with the, with the camera and I'm getting used to doing that again. So it might get a little bit blurry every once in a while. Ah, Steel Legion Drab. So what I'm doing with Steel Legion Drab is I'm painting all of the inner hide of the, this fur cloak that Krom is wearing. So Steel Legion Drab is a great color. It's very thick. It, um, it's, it covers really, really well. You want to make sure because it's such a thick color that you thin it down. What I mean by that is put it into a wet palette or put a little drop of water onto your brush before you dip it into the paint pot and then mix it uh, either on your hand or in the lid of the paint pot sometimes. The easiest thing to do is to just get a wet palette then you don't have to worry about um, doing all of that other stuff. The paint is always going to be ready to use and just a, a great technique. So he's also got a pouch on his belt on the right that's hidden behind his shield. I'm going to be painting that in between takes. But for right now, I'm just getting the, uh, the inner uh, part of the cloak there, as well as the pouches. He's got a pouch on his left hip there. Now we're using Rakrath Flesh. Okay, yeah, so that was Steel Legion Drab. Now we're using Rakrath Flesh. So if you look at the Games Workshop model, you notice that uh, they paint the horns in Rakarth flesh. Put a little bit too much paint on my brush there. And they also do the folded over part, uh, cuff I guess you would call it, of his boot. The boot itself is black and that folded over cuff is a very light ivory color so I decided to use Rakarth flesh. These are all my interpretations of the colors as well. The official Games Workshop artwork is from you know the the previous paint range or maybe even the paint range before the previous paint range because yeah it's, it's such an older model you'll notice also that because this is a metal model it's uh, very heavy and I took him off of his base or the tab because what I'm going to be doing is putting him on a resin base so uh, unfortunately that means there's only two contact points between Krom and my little cork hand piece there so he's gonna be slipping and sliding falling all over himself throughout the course of this video so uh, apologies for that ahead of time okay it's a good idea to paint any areas that are gonna be black just paint them once with Abaddon black uh, even after you prime the model in black and that's to cover up any uh, uneven spraying if your primer doesn't cover that well it will help rectify that it'll give a nice even black coloring to everything the belt is eventually going to be a dark reddish brown but I noticed that it was it, it looked a little bit like the paint was uh, the primer hadn't completely covered the belt so I'm just painting it now in black as a preemptive measure. I'm also painting the boot now. The boot that's on the poor Night Panther helmet. I thought that was an interesting uh, design choice to not have a head in the helmet. It's like an empty helmet, like he just kicked it or whacked it off the head of the knight and it just landed at his feet. <laughs> Personally, I think it would have been more appropriate to have a head in there, but that's all right. Okay, Rackarth Flesh now. We're also going to be painting the skulls on the shield. And evening out the horns. Ah, oh, it's so refreshing to be doing this again, you guys. I've missed making tutorials. I don't know why. Um, it's just a great feeling of being able to work and share your work. So for those of you out there who are just coming to my channel for the first time or haven't really been watching my videos for a while, this is kind of what I do or what I started doing and um, years ago making these tutorials and 
Um, I have a great time doing it. It's a lot of work, but it's a great way for me to track my paint schemes and to just see how I progress as a painter. And uh, if you are interested in doing something like this yourself, now we're painting the bones on his necklace. And we're also going to be painting the uh, the binding, the wrapping on the sword and the axe. If you're interested in doing it, all uh, or something like this, then uh, definitely build up your YouTube channel. Make painting tutorials. They don't have to be full-on, real-time, live-action ones like I'm doing. My first video tutorials were actually just me holding the paint pots and the models, and I'd say, okay, now we're gonna paint these colors, and then the video would cut ahead to the next clip and the model would be painted up and then I'd be saying, okay, now we are going to paint on these colors. And I decided when I had the, the camera and the hardware that I would rather do something like this. Lead Belcher now for the caps of his horns, also the blades of the sword and the axe and the chainmail. Uh, yeah, making videos, posting content on YouTube, being a part of the Google community is uh, a great way to, um, I guess, get in touch with and network and um, learn from others in the community. I'm also using Lead Belcher to... Oh, excuse me, to paint the helmet of the Night Panther and uh, the rim of his shoulder pad there, which you'll see in a second. Lead Belcher is a great paint. It uh, is just as good as the old silver, which was bolt gun metal, and they, they all cover really, really well. Balthazar Gold is where you see the real improvement because the old gold color was uh, Gehenna's gold, and it was very thin, it uh, didn't cover, especially if you're going over black, there is no way that I could do one coat of Gehenna's gold. So uh, I'm really happy that they they fixed the recipe for that. And um, yeah, before you would have to paint a primary layer in like a dark brown or a lighter brown and then paint your gold color over it. Oh boy, those are like the dark ages of, of painting for me. So eventually I'm going to be painting this guy as a War Master level for a client. And that's going to mean that when we get to the highlighting section of the model that we really build up the, the paint in layers. For this first part, the base coat, you really just need to lay down a primary color over the primer, uh, the, the main color over the primer, and then once you hit it with a shade, all the colors really kind of change and uh, you build in depth with shadows and um, it's in the highlighting where you really put in the extra work. Because if you just do one highlight, then it's going to be a lot different than if you do four or five layers of highlights. And so... Um, yeah, what, what we're really focusing on in this first video, like always, is the primary, the, the base colors, as well as the wash, which you saw at the beginning of the video. Okay, yeah, like, like I said, the rim part of the shoulder pads there on all of the Games Workshop pictures that I've seen are all in silver. So that's what we're doing here. I think this is where I noticed that I missed a little bit of the gold there, so I'm just going to paint that over. At the top of his Chaos Shield, you'll also see some uh, metal, I guess, binding or edging at the top there, so I double-checked my uh, reference picture and notice that it was gold as well. So Painting that in gold. Also the Night Panther helmet top is in gold as well Yeah, 
yeah, I'm doing a lot of jumping around with the colors, you guys. So if, if I happen to uh, jump to the next color and you're painting and you might miss it, I'll just let you know. So right now I'm uh, using black to go over the shield and the uh, haft of the axe there. Yeah, moving back to Balthazar Gold, we're going to be painting up, I think this is where I went into the, yeah, this pommel. Gosh, I keep messing up all of my <laughs> sword terminologies. The, the horizontal part of the sword is going to get hit with that gold. Also, there's a little bit of a an arrow that is pointing up through the blade, so that's also getting some Balthazar gold as well. Yeah, and I, it's it's a little bit blurry now, but I'm just taking the Abaddon black and covering the shield. The tricky thing is that I'm I've decided to uh, going back to Balthazar Gold now. I've decided to record these videos just off of the camera, and uh, I'm not actually putting it through to my computer screen. What I'm doing is just filming it on the camera and then taking the memory card. And plugging that in so that it doesn't um, have that that weird that weird noise. I'm, I'm just trying to see if, if that works. Okay, moving on. Rhinox Hide is the color for the belt, and uh, in between of those, this clip and the last clip, what I did was I just cleaned up some of the colors. Uh, I I noticed that there was some some messiness so I just wanted to do that off camera and uh, that way it wouldn't be wasting any of your time but um, painting is really painting miniatures and models I was doing this with my lady boss the other night she was painting with me her kingdom death stuff and uh, she was like I, I don't like screwing up because I, I don't like painting because I feel like I'm screwing up a lot and uh, it's it's uh, something that new painters learn. It's something that took me a long time to learn, and I got real frustrated with it. But uh, I learned that the majority of painting and getting a, a finished product that you like is all about cleaning up after you paint. So to help explain that, what I'm doing now is I'm using Abaddon Black on the little arrow points on his armor. And uh, some of that black bleeds out into the armor plate and it, it smudges, I guess. So uh, later on, I, I don't know if I do it on camera or off camera, but I, I clean that up. And if you don't clean it up, then it looks like you're not painting within the lines and it looks kind of messy. But um, yeah, painting, getting the finished product that you want, all about going back over and cleaning up your lines and just taking that extra step to... Uh, tighten up what you've already done. We're taking Balthazar Gold now and we're painting the chaos symbol on the shield. If you're painting something really thin, like the, the lines on this shield, a bit of advice that I would give is to kind of paint at an angle so that you're not 
um, pointing the brush straight down and using the, the, the paint on your tip and just dragging it across because if you do that you're gonna leave a lot of paint where you don't want it to be. Just take some paint, put it on your brush, wipe most of it off on a napkin and then go in at an angle almost like um, parallel to the, the, the line that you're painting. Sandry dust. And if you rewind, you can see how I did that earlier just now. So Xandry dust is going to be the color of the cloak. And what I'm going to try to do is uh, eventually after I shade it, after it dries, and in part two of this video, I'm going to try to make a uh, like a, a pelt of a kind of like snow leopard Kind of creature with a uh, light kind of creamy colored fur with uh, maybe some black spots on it or something. I'm, I'm kind of lost for that because if you look at all of the the Crown the Conqueror models they don't really give you an indication of what the cloak is supposed to be. There's no official Games Workshop um, rear view shot of the model. They started doing that more recently and uh, all of the pictures that I could find of Crom had him on the uh, goblin green base Ugh, man when i first started painting all of the bases were colored green and um and i think it was only in the the 2000s when even like the, the earlier early to mid 2000s when they started painting the bases brown uh, personally i prefer to leave the bases in black and uh, that's just a personal preference because it, it kind of lets you draw the eye up. When you see a model in a bright goblin green base, like it is so distracting. If you look at the old white dwarfs from the early 2000s and you see the fully painted models on those bright goblin green bases, it's just so distracting. It's like it, it takes all the hard work that you put into painting your models and it just kind of flushes it down the drain. So you might notice I switched to a bigger brush, get more of this paint on. Whenever you're painting fur like this, uh, you don't want to put too much paint on your, your brush tip. I think I, I made that mistake doing this because I wanted to get it on as fast as possible. Because I was just thinking, ah, oh, it's only a base coat, it's fine if I use a lot of paint. But really, you want to uh, keep the paint thin, keep, keep it workable on your, on your wet palette and um, just don't, don't slap it on the model. I think in between takes I went back and um, right after this take I took a heavier brush and I kind of really dug it down into the, into the, uh, the cape and I kind of uh, carried off some of the clumpiness in the paint. Kind of like a Brillo pad when, you, when you're scrubbing uh, something off of a pan kind of lets you clear those deposits out. Stop bending over, Crom. You're drunk. Stop falling over, Crom. Okay, Rackarth Flesh again. I, th I think I'm going back to the binding now. For the sword and the axe. I believe I'm eventually going to paint the bottoms of these weapons, a little cap at the bottom. I'm going to paint that in Lead Belcher. So yeah, you guys, I have so many uh, commissions lined up. I'm kind of working on them uh, at a uh, at a steady pace. I would I would say I'm kind of devoting my time to each commission and um, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to get them done as, as fast as possible. I noticed that Idik Beer invited me to a uh, Google group, Get It Painted, and um, hopefully to, to keep us all motivated and on track with our projects. So I can't wait to, to uh, get into that group and, and um, just put my stuff on there. But I'm also... Uh, if you don't know, I've also got a Google group called Warboss Tay's 2015 Painting Community. 
and I uh, definitely encourage you if you're not a part of that group. We've got 148 members right now. Just join that group, post up pictures, follow each other's work. It's a great way to stay connected to the community. I see people posting, um, people that I follow, they post in uh, the Google group. They post in other Google groups like Legion of Gamza, um, Itic Beers, uh, Get It Painted groups. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's a great way. Just keep posting your work out there, you guys. Put it up on forums. Uh, take pictures of it, post it up on Facebook and on, on Twitter. Just uh, do as much as you can to stay connected with the community. What I'm doing now with the Steel Legion Drab, oh, so blurry, is I'm painting the hair on the skulls, on the heads there. They're all going to be brunettes. I'm going back over with Balthazar Gold. Um, the Knight's Panther helmets have little rolled up uh, colors on uh, right between where the silver meets the gold. And in the Games Workshop fluff, it looks like this guy's from Sterland because his uh, wrapping up there, his binding cloth binding is green and a kind of cream color. So kind of like the Sterling River Patrol is green and white. Sterling itself, the province, their colors are green and yellow. Uh, but I, I think I kind of went with green and white, kind of like the Games Workshop art. So I'm just painting the entire thing right now in Rackard Flesh just to, more than anything else, see where the lines are. And I'm coming back with Castellan Green to do the uh, every other kind of staggered design of the helmet there. So again, you want to put just a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush. Looks like I put too much there. And you want to look at your, your painting surface from all the angles. A uh, very common rookie painter mistake is kind of just holding your model from one angle and painting painting it at that one angle you want to definitely see your model from every single angle because you know when you pick it up and you're moving it around if somebody comes to the table and they see from across the room wow your stuff looks really great and they get up close and they look at it from a different angle and they see that you know it's missing all the parts then that's that's no fun so definitely check it out Okay, I've let the paint dry for a bit, and I'm coming back now. We're gonna start with our washes. And my my philosophy here is I'm gonna be doing a two-part kind of color for the washes. And it's gonna be what I call my, my dirty wash. And it's dark, it's it's dirty, it's gritty, it's what I wish. Um I, I wish this color existed. It's it's a mixture of known oil and Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade, I think, is just a little too brown, and known oil is just straight black, so there's no there's no color to it. So the way I achieve this effect is I completely uh, cover the model with known oil first, and uh, this tones down the colors. It it makes everything really dark and uh, adds very uh, simple convenient shadows to all of your all of your surfaces especially for surfaces like the cloak here where you've got you know all this texture any textured surfaces with shadows and depth is going to uh, any of those surfaces are going to really benefit from known oil if I was going with Agrax Earthshade, then um, some of those shadows would uh, 
possibly not look very natural. So known oil gives you a, a very easy and convenient um, way to put those shadows in there and show where those recesses are. Uh, I apologize for the blurriness. I'm starting to move my uh, crumb here out of the, the center of frame. So I apologize for that. And we're just getting now into the, the chain mail. You see that I, I wrapped all of the binding, the horns. Um, there at the top of the cloak, just trying to hit everything. Now the danger with washes, if uh, you haven't heard me say this over and over again in other videos, is it's very easy to get carried away. And it's very easy to say, oh, it's great, it's perfect. It's like instant talent in a bottle. I can put this down and go watch TV or something. And uh, you don't want to do that because your wash will get pulled down by gravity and it'll start to pool in the lower areas and um, it will leave these horrible, horrible, like dried puddles uh, of, of uh, oily deposits and uh, you don't want that. So I, I'm going to be moving the, the, the wash around with my paintbrush as much as possible and uh, just make sure you have a napkin nearby so that if you've got large puddles you can kind of soak them up with your brush and then just dab your brush clean on your on your napkins now you notice as i'm adding the agrax earth shade to the known oil the uh the color really changes on the cloak there it goes from a uh, very Kind of corn colored I mean not corn but like a kind of sandy brown to a more uh, dirty dirty blonde brown color which is kind of closer to what I want I didn't want it to be too yellow or also distract from the armor and again we're just taking that agrax earth shade and we are moving it around all of the surfaces you do not want to touch the armor the armor is going to get a separate shade and uh, we want it to really pop, that gold to really pop. So we're uh, going to try to leave these darker shades off of the gold armor. Like I said, this dirty wash is really just to tie down the colors there. So I've given uh, my model a couple minutes to dry and I'm going uh, back now to finish the job. And what we're going to use is Seraphim Sepia. So you'll notice right under the horn there, if you look at the right horn, uh, there is a little bit of a puddle. And um, if you let the wash dry for too long, and you go back and you're, you see the puddle there, and you're like, oh, I got to move it and uh, put your brush there, then that's what happens. That water puddle gets soaked up and sucked away, and it leaves uh, a depression of the previous color underneath. So you could really see it there in that angle, that little patch of brighter color. And there you have it. Um, I'm going to let my model dry now and we're going to come back for part two when we're going to get onto the highlighting. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. Latest players!